This is a derivometer made by the Ott company in the 19, I don't know, 30s? Hard to say. It's a curved metal thing with angle markings around the edge and a spinny roundy thing. Look in the middle there and it's a weird glass dome with reflective walls and a little crosshair down in there. You put this thing over a curve drawn on paper, you move something around like that, and it measures the derivative. The derivative is one of the basic concepts in calculus. It's easily one of the most important mathematical ideas of the past 500 years. Here's my explanation of the derivative in 30 seconds. Start the clock! It's a specific way of measuring how fast something is changing. Like, look, here's the views over time for my video about the sector. The views were at zero on day zero, and then they started increasing pretty quickly, and then they died off a bit, and then for some reason they increased again over here, and then eventually leveled off again. You can tell where the views are increasing really fast by how steep the line is. Steeper means it was increasing fast at that moment, and not so steep means it was increasing slowly. And that, boys and girls, is what we call the derivative. It's just how steep the line is. 30 seconds. Nailed it. Now, how do you actually measure the steepness of a curvy line if you had it drawn on paper? Well, it's not that hard to do. Even without a derivometer, you could use a ruler or something to draw what we call the tangent line. That's just a straight line which matches the slope of the curve at whatever point you're looking at. And now you just measure the slope of that line. There's a few ways to do that. You could make a right triangle and then measure the rise over the run. Or if you know some trigonometry, you could use a protractor to measure the angle. Looks like 27 and a half degrees and then the slope is the tangent of that angle it would be 0.52 or if you want to get really fancy you can use a protractor which has slope markings instead of traditional angle markings less precise but it still looks something like 0.52 that wasn't so hard was it so why do we even need a special derivometer for this well the ot derivometer basically does the same thing that i just did by hand i mean look at it really it's just a fancy protractor right but this thing is super precise and it's all because of the stuff in the middle there. If you're really trying to measure derivatives by hand, you're going to realize pretty quick that the hardest step is right at the beginning. Draw the tangent line. I mean, just eyeballing it, you could make some pretty plausible looking lines, but the difference of slopes here is actually pretty significant. So we're going to need a better way of drawing that line perfectly to match the slope of the curve. And here's an old trick that the drafters used to do. You get a little mirror. I, actually, I don't have a little mirror. Maybe let your mom help out with this part. You angle the mirror until the curve looks smooth, like no kinks, right about there. Draw that line and then use a t-square or something to draw a perpendicular, and that's your tangent line. And now I think we can truly appreciate the beauty of Ott's design. Really, it is just a protractor, but with special hardware to read the derivative super accurately. Right at the pivot point of this arm is a glass dome that acts like a magnifier, together with a swiveling mirror. You put the little crosshair in the middle right at the point you want to measure and you use these little guys to line up the protractor scale with the grid on the paper. Swivel that thing till there's no kinks in the line and then the arm lets you read the angle directly. And look at this, there's actually mirrors on both sides of the glass part here so you can line up the curves on the front and the back to make sure you get it right. And check this out, it comes with a cute little rear view mirror you stick on here and now you can see the front and the back at the same time. All of this stuff is just to let you measure that tangent line with no guesswork at all. Unfortunately, the scale on this thing is by angles, not slopes. So if you want the slope value, you have to look up the tangent of this angle. I got an angle of 28.2, which gives me a derivative of 0.536. This was actually a graph of sine of x, and I'm measuring the derivative at x equal 1. So the exact answer should be cosine of 1 radian, which is 0 0.540. Pretty darn good. This thing was made by the Ott Company, which was founded in 1873 by this guy, Albert Ott. He started off making instruments for measuring water, and eventually they started making all kinds of measuring instruments, including various types of fancy planimeters and this here derivometer. It's hard to say exactly when mine was made. It doesn't have any dates on it. And when it sits in its wooden box for decades, it really doesn't show its age at all. I found a picture of this same exact instrument in a paper from 1942. So this one could be from the 40s or 30s or even before or after, I guess. I don't really know. The Ott Company still exists and they're still in the hydrology business. Ott Hydromet. 
and they even have a YouTube channel. They made a nice video about the history of the company where I got all these old photos from. I'll put a link down there. And they even have a podcast, the Otcast. These guys get it. Hold on, did you see that? I have the original wooden box with sophisticated green billiard fabric so I don't scratch nothing. I love the way it sits in there diagonally. Classy. And hey, it says Derivometer right there on the box. This one apparently was owned by the University of British Columbia Geography Department. They engraved the metal too. Unfortunately, I don't have any original instructions. I was able to find this scan of the German instructions. I'm not sure if they ever made a version in English. The instructions say that it also included a table of values of the tangent. Nice touch for everybody who didn't have calculators, which is everybody. But why didn't they just label the scale with the tangents directly? You know, like my protractor for the slopes. I'm pretty sure the reason why they didn't do that is this here, the vernier. This lets you read an extra digit of precision in the angle, but it only works on linear scales. You just can't use a vernier on a scale of slopes. Almost nobody's heard of the Ott derivimeter, but real ones know there was another derivimeter. The Gerber derivimeter. I made a video about that one, you know what I'm saying? The Gerber doesn't use mirrors, but it has a pivoting tangent line with these knobs that you use to fine-tune the curvature. Very clever, and I absolutely love the Gerber design. Hey, the scale has actual slopes on it too. But it pains me to say it, I think the Ott is a little bit better. The Gerber has little fussy parts in it, which don't hold up all that well over the years. The little pointer on mine was broken off when I got it, and I had to stick it back on there. The plastic is cracking, and you can see the cavity in mine is filling up with dust and dirt. Probably from the deteriorating original, original case. But look at this thing. No fiddly little parts at all. This thing is solid. Works today just as well as the day it was made, and really I can't imagine this thing ever growing old. It's just a few pieces of metal. Simple and elegant, the way a mathematical instrument should be. As far as I can tell, these things are super rare. I looked for years before I found the Gerber, and even longer to get the Ott. Could it be that I'm the only person in the world to own working examples of both commercially produced derivimeters? But wait, that old article in German about derivative measuring instruments no mention of the Gerber, because it hadn't been invented yet, but look, there was another. The Prism Derivator by someone named Von Harbu. It uses yet another strategy for lining up the tangent. It has a prism which you swivel over your curve, and lining up the two images lets you measure a pretty good tangent line. Really, it's pretty similar to using a mirror, so you could make a derivimeter out of it. I've never seen this thing mentioned anywhere else, but it looks like it could have been a real commercial product. Do you know anything about the prism derivator? Leave a comment. I guess owning two derivimeters is pretty impressive though, right? Rivals in their youth, but now they're side by side as friends in my basement. I mean, just think of the heads I could turn. I roll up in the club, set down my Ott derivimeter in the original wooden box. She catches my eye and says, wow, you have one derivimeter? <laughs> Lady, I think you better come back to my place. 